All right, everyone, thank you for joining our last session of the day to come and learn with us. This is a student's guide to learning with CodeMonkey, so it's not really a teacher-centered webinar. Obviously, feel free to join us. Um, students and all of our attendees, if you don't mind just raising your hand, just so I know that you can hear me. And if you're not sure where to do that, you can do that in the participants. And when you click on participants, you'll able, you will be able to see the hand raise the hand and lower. All right, perfect, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so always when doing um, some video conferencing and things like that, I always like to talk about a little bit of etiquette. This is a little bit different because we are doing it um, with you as your students. So being on time, making sure that you're always five to 10 minutes early before the meeting. Um, everyone is muted today, but if you have any questions, please feel free to, answer, to ask them in the Q&A box. Um, and if you're not sure how to do that, on your toolbar, you see a little Q&A icon and you'll be able to click right there to answer any questions. Um, as far as the presentation, just making sure that you're always in a good spot if you're on camera, making sure you have headphones. And then when you're using the Q&A box, please make sure that you are using school appropriate language. Um, and then if you need to use any um, signals or anything like that, just go ahead and raise your hand. Um, for the most part, we'll be able to interact with you best in the Q&A box. Okay, so my name is Lena Sale, and I am the professional development manager here at CodeMonkey. I did teach in the classroom for about 10 years, and I worked with students from K through eight, um, working in technology. So if you have any uh, questions or anything like that, feel free to email me or reach out to me on Twitter. So just want to share a little bit of backstory about CodeMonkey. So CodeMonkey was founded in 2014. Um, uh, the CEO, and Jonathan, and his brother and his childhood best friend um, actually developed the company. They are computer programmers and they were working with students and just noticed that a lot of students didn't really um, want to learn in the same way um, you know, that computer programmers did. It was very boring. So that's how kind of how CodeMonkey was born. So today we are going to be working on CodeMonkey lessons uh, and challenges one through five, 11 through 15. Uh, we'll be focusing on some coding vocabulary and computational thinking, as well as to get coding with CodeMonkey. Um, I see a couple of other people um, joining from previous sessions and lessons. Just want to let you guys know that this is the same lesson that I have done in a few previous sessions. So if you have joined us before, just know that it is the same thing. Okay, so before we get started, I actually wanna just kind of take a temperature reading to kind of see um, everyone's background and just see how comfortable you are with coding. Um, so I'm gonna launch this poll. I'm gonna give everyone just a couple of minutes, well, just about a minute to go ahead and take this poll. We're going to do just about 10 more seconds just so I can get a good read. Right now we have 33 people, so just waiting for a little bit more of you to go ahead and take the poll. Okay, so I'm just sharing a little bit of the results with, with you. Uh, most of you, the average is that most of you are beginners here, which is great. It's exactly what we want you to be. You're still familiar about learning, you're a decent coder, and then um, have you used CodeMonkey before? Most of you have not, so this is great because this is a perfect introductory, and then just wondering what grade levels you are in. So the average grade level is fourth grade, basically second through fifth grade. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and get back started. So the very first thing about being a computer programmer is obviously understanding the computer vocabulary that's associated with that. So we're going to talk about what an algorithm is, what a function is, and then basically the, the basic directions we'll be learning today about functions are step and turn. 
So an algorithm is a set of steps to solve a problem. So any kind of mapping or anything that we basically have to do, so anything that requires some kind of planning. So if you think about on a traditional day when you're getting ready to go to school, um, you will have a certain prep a sort of preparation needed to kind of get there. Or maybe if you're going to um, sports camp or something like that, you'll have a certain amount of planning. You might want to bring your snacks. You have a certain order of kind of how you get outside of the door. So that's a set of se set of step-by-step -step directions that you will kind of use when doing an algorithm. So we're going to go ahead and look at my favorite video, which is about an algorithm. Um, and this will just give you a little bit of background knowledge. If we want a computer to understand how to do something, we need to give it an algorithm. Pick up, brush. Algorithm sounds like a big word, doesn't it? Actually, an algorithm is something very simple, but important. Pick up, toothbrush. An algorithm is a list of steps you give the computer to solve a problem or get something done. Imagine that you need to show someone how you brush your teeth, so they can learn how to do it themselves. You need to explain all the little steps you do in the right order so they can understand how to do it without getting confused. The instructions would go like this. 1. Open the toothpaste. 2. Put a bit of toothpaste on the toothbrush. 3. Open your mouth. 4. Brush your teeth nicely. 5. Rinse your mouth with water. 6. Smile. It is important to explain the right steps in the right order so you can get great results. So that's just a little uh, video that I like to share um, to talk about what an algorithm is. And we'll actually identify an algorithm when we kind of get moving um, while we start coding. So. Now that we know kind of what an algorithm is, that it's a set of step-by-step -step directions that requires a little bit of planning, like brushing your teeth or learning how to ride your bike or anything like that. All right, so the next thing that we have is our step and turn. So both step and turn are functions and they both have an associated argument. So an argument, what do we want it to do? So when we tell the monkey to step, we're asking him how far. And when we ask the monkey to turn, we also are designated a certain um, degree turn that the monkey will actually go through. So we'll talk about that when we get into the platform itself. The next thing that's pretty important outside of those two terms that we're going to be working with today is understanding what computational thinking is. So computational thinking is can be seen in all things that we do school-wide, whether it's social studies or science or math or even art. It, you know, those special areas is really just recognizing those kinds of things. So there's four parts to computational thinking. The first is abstraction. So that's focusing on what is relevant and filtering out unnecessary information. So if you think about um, yourself, maybe you're going to an amusement park. So what we kind of want to know about the amusement park is did you have a good time? And what you wore to the amusement park is not necessarily important information. So we filter that out of the story. It's not necessary, doesn't really have anything to do with the ultimate goal of the story. This is really important when you're also doing some summaries and some things in language arts, or even if you're doing a science experiment, making sure that you have the focus of what is actually important. Then we have pattern recognition. So that's observing trends. This is really relevant in math concepts. Um, or in science when you're looking at graphs and you're able to see kind of looking at the data and just kind of seeing is there a pattern in what it is that we're seeing. Then there's also the al algorithmic design, which is what we just talked about in algorithm. And then there's decomposition. That's looking at what the big problem is. And instead of like when you're doing a project, you break it up into those smaller pieces. and That's the decomposition. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to sign in first and then I'm going to give you the username and password. So if you already have an account, that's perfect. Okay. But for today, I would like you to go ahead and use the same account that we are kind of going to be using together. So what I did is I went to codemonkey.com and at codemonkey.com in the right hand corner, I click log in and this will bring me to the log in box in the email username and the password you are going to enter in the username as webinar and the password as monkey once you have done so i would like for you to raise your hand 
So I know how far you've gotten or that you're there with me. In some other sessions, some people have gotten stuck or, or that kind of a thing. So just let us know if that is the case for you. And we'll do our best to help you. Okay, so it looks like overall almost every single person is in. So I'm going to go ahead and get logged in as well with you. So remember it's webinar and then the password is monkey with a capital and the number one. And now I just click log in. Now that I've gotten logged in, you'll see that the if you've been to CodeMonkey before, then it's changed a little bit. Otherwise, if not, it's brand new to you. So over here on the left hand side is where you will get to all of your courses when you create creations which we're not going to be doing that today that's where they'll all be held and then in the discover feature are games and challenges that have been created by other students like you after this webinar today this username and password will not be valid so just keep that in mind so today we're going to be working in coding adventure so what i want everyone to do is find coding adventure part one go ahead and click on it those students who are in here, you will need to have another browser or open up a web page so that you can actually see um, the CodeMonkey page and go along with us. So for the case of this, I am using the same username and password as you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and mute everything. What I want you to go ahead and do is click on the challenge map. When you click on the challenge map and the double arrows at the top, that will take us back to the very beginning. So when I do so, I will go ahead and click on challenge number one. And what we see here is we have Gordo and Gordo is our teacher assistant. He pops up with tips and directions and anything I may know. Now, what happens typically, I'm a student and I don't like to read that much. So I click out of the box and I didn't even remember what the directions were. So I say, what do I do? You can always click on Gordo for any directions. So I have some kind of a code here on the right hand side. This is our code editor. So that means where all of our code will go is on the right hand side. We want to see how the code works. We click the run button. If we want to reset, we can just reset the code over here. On the left hand side is our stage, which is what is happening with our text. So as the text is running, something is happening over here on the left hand side. Anything that I hover over with white text is an object and it will actually type out on the screen for us if need be. So if I'm not a perfect speller, that kind of happens. Also the language that we use in CodeMonkey is Coding Adventure, Dodo's Math and Game Builder courses is called CoffeeScript. CoffeeScript is a shorter version of the language. It just means it doesn't have things like a semicolon or brackets inside of it. Um, it's just very clear and concise. The goal of all of our challenges is to always write the shortest, most concise code that we can possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click run because I have code here. We always debug a challenge when there's pre-built code. The tip told me to use step 15 instead of step 10. However, I see this ruler here and I want to verify that that is in fact the distance that I step. So I pick up my ruler and I'm going to measure the distance. When I do, I'm going to type it here and I'm going to click run. Hooray, I solved this challenge. Gordo gives me a little tip and you'll see here I got two stars. I would like for you to either enter in the, enter in the chat box, I mean in the Q&A box, why you think that I only got two stars on this challenge rather than three. So Wendy, I saw that you raised your hand. If you can just enter in the Q&A box, that'd be helpful. The question is, why did I only get two stars instead of three? Okay, that is correct. I used more than one line of code. The goal, remember, is to write the shortest, most concise code. So I can always go back. Did I fail this challenge? I did not. But there's always a more concise way to do it. So now I have reached three-star solution. And now what I'm going to do 
is I am going to let you work through challenge number five. So you're doing challenges one through five. When you're finished, I would like you to raise your hand so I know that we can continue on to the next portion and I will meet you at challenge number five. And I will be working alongside you as I go. If you notice, the monkey does have a wristwatch on, so that helps us to know which direction we would like for him to turn. And it is on his left wrist. Okay, I'm almost to challenge number five. I hope you're getting close to me. I see just about four attendees have reached challenge number five, so I hope you're getting close. You guys are doing rock star coding over here. Okay, remember to raise your hand when you've gotten to challenge number five. Okay, great. Looks like the majority of you are with me, so that's amazing. All right, so there's something different and unique about this challenge than something that we've seen before. You can enter in the Q&A box why you think you may, why this challenge looks different than anything that we have done before. Okay, so there are some obstacles here as well. So something we might not have seen before in the other challenges. If you think about something that we worked on earlier, is there something that we have not gotten the chance to see before? Okay, good. So there's multiple steps to reach the banana. So that means this is actually the first time that we truly see an algorithm. So. This is where it requires some set of planning to get to. Now I'm going to show you a common mistake that might be made here. And you will see that I made an error in capitalizing step and it says, I don't know what step is. We have to make sure that we are keeping with the right syntaxing to make sure that we are able to, or to correctly get to the end. I'm sorry, so we can correctly make sure that the computer understands what it is that we're doing. So the computer will let you know when it doesn't understand something. So something regarding spelling or anything like that. Okay. My apologies. All right, so now that we have actually worked through that those first five set of challenges, we are gonna start, we are going to learn um, something new. So we're moving on to the next story map and I would like you to click on challenge number 11, objects and friends. So in challenge 11, we see something new. We see the function of turn two. Instead of saying turn right or turn left or turn 45 degrees, we can see that we can specifically step to an object. So when what we do is the monkey is no longer turning right or turning left, we say we want it to turn to a specific object. So that's just something to note here. Okay. So I'm going to skip to a different, <laughs> a different challenge here and make sure that I want to go over one more thing with you before we get close here to the end of the challenge and then you guys are going to work together.
So what we're going to do is, if you saw Gordo just told us that that was a function of turn two, I am gonna to go to, you guys are gonna continue staying where you are. I'm gonna to go to challenge number 13. Um, and challenge 13 is something different than we've seen before. Before, we have seen that there is only one character on the screen that's moving and or on our stage that's moving and that character is the monkey. So what Coding Adventure does for you is that you don't have to associate what we call an object tag with the monkey because the computer automatically assumes that the object is the monkey itself. So in this case, we don't have to assume that. However, we need the computer to identify who else is moving. And in this case, we need the turtle. If I don't enter the period, the computer will not understand that. So turtle dot is an object tag. Just like we did with the object tag of the monkey, we do the object tag of the turtle. And this is important so we know who's moving. So the turtle will need to move. So we have to make sure that we are doing the correct number of um, distance for the turtle to move. So we just learned what an object tag was and the function of turn two. So what I would like for you to do now is work through 11 through 15. Once you work through 11 through 15, just know it's okay if you get a one star the first time, there's no problem in failing. Many developers in Google and Facebook and all of those places, um, they fail quite often when they're coding. And a lot of times it has to do with those syntax. A lot of pages and pages and pages of code and the code will have to do that they had an error within their syntax. So just keep that in mind that that happens and it's just always, there's no problem with failure. We call that, I like to call it failing forward. So trying again until you get it right. It's kind of like when you ride a bike the first time you are not an expert and you continue learning. And eventually if you practice enough, you can do some really cool tricks and things like that. So I'm gonna let you guys work through 11 through 15. When you've finished working through 11 through 15, just raise your hand so I can know that you are all on the same page with me and then we'll get moving to the next part. And those of you that can't see your screen or you're, you're looking at me while you're doing this call, just make sure that um, you kind of have different pages, you know, toggling between the two pages, having two different pages open. And if you're still stuck, you can let us know and we'll do our best to help you. And we'll also give you some tips for what to do when you get stuck. So we're going to give you just about another minute to work through those challenges to challenge 15. Those of you that are struggling between tabs, you'll see here I have my presentation open and I have another tab here open for Code Monkey. And so you're not able to see my full screen because I am sharing a portion of my screen, but I would click from one window, this is called a window, to the next window when I'm trying to work through things. So you can just click the plus, plus sign if you're in, um, on Google or if you're wherever and with the Zoom, you just move it over. So I just move it to the side so that I'm able to see it. Okay, I'm going to work through 15 with you. You'll see that this is an assessment challenge. So this is the first time, this is not the first time, but this means that there's no pre-built code inside of here. So it's just an assessment challenge. So I know that I need to use the turtle so that I can get the monkey across to the, across to the banana. 
And I have a little bit of thinking that kind of goes through here. So I'm planning it out, trying to see what's going to be work best. And sometimes I just wrote, write a line of code and debug it. And other times I might write out all the code. So, but it's easier for me to see where the error is when we work through it like that. Awesome. You guys did a great job. We worked on functions, what an algorithm was. Um, a function is step with the argument of whatever we wanted to. So step 10, step 20, step 30. Um, when we turn, that's also a function. So which direction we return, the argument is the direction. And we also learned turn to and what an object tag was. So you actually learned five really important vocabulary terms to help you with computer science and programming. So if you're wondering how do you get logged in when you're finished, our team is going to be sending a, this um, recording to your teachers as well as a way to um, request free access for COVID-19 subscription. And we want you to obviously continue coding. Now, this is a great question, a common question we've had. Um, what do you do when you get stuck? So one question is to send a message to your teacher or maybe ask a friend for help. Review past challenges. So in CodeMonkey's Coding Adventure, you can always go back to previous challenges that you played, just like when I got two star solutions and those things, I went back and I tried them again. So you can always go back if you're feeling stuck. And you can use super hints. So what happens is when I've missed a lot of times on my screen, Gordo will pop up with a text bubble and his text bubble will be a super hint for you. And teachers can turn those off as well. So now that we've worked through those coding challenges, we've done quite a lot today. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box and we will get to them as fast as we can. Um, teachers, I know that there are a few of you teachers on here, so just in the essence of time, we have a couple of minutes. I would like to show you the new, the teacher side of things has also changed. So if you have any questions, we do have um, some resources and things in the, in our new um, part of the menu here, it'll say um, the help center. So if you're having any questions or anything like that, you can just go ahead and click the help center. And that will give you some questions on some ways to kind of navigate that new screen. All right, so we have worked through those challenges, um, kind of went over how to get into coding adventure itself and kind of what how to use the ruler and what Gordo was for, um, how to go back and revisit past challenges. So we want to thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at CodeMonkeySTU. And you can also email us um, with any questions. Remember to write code, catch bananas, and save the world. You guys have a wonderful day. Bye.